Welcome back all, I'm MTG Joe. What we're gonna be doing today is a quick like five minute deck tech. So I'm brewing up a bunch of decks for Throne of Eldraine. It's our new set that's coming out next week. Um, so we played a lot of rotation proof decks up to this point. Uh, those are cards that will remain in standard that were already spoiled, but today as of Friday, all the cards are spoiled. So uh, now's the chance we get to kind of brew together some decks. I'll be playing these throughout on the channel once we start getting our cards next week. Um, so I'm going to go with some of the existing shells first. I'll do a few of these 5 minute deck techs. Um, I will be posting as many decks as possible on my Aether Hub account. So if you just go under Aether Hub, look up MTG Joe, all my decks will be posted there. I've already put about 3 or 4 up. I'm going to keep adding to it uh, over the weekend. So I'll try to do as many of these as I can. Um, just time wise, I'll just uh, it's a lot easier for me to post just the deck list than to do a video. Um, so this is the deck. Um, just going to go over it like this. It's a little bit easier. So this is Aether Hub where I post all my articles. Uh, you can get the deck techs. Uh, if you're following me on Instagram, this is how I do the gallery view. Uh, I know a lot of people have asked how we kind of put the cards in to the set here. Actually, this might be an easier way to kind of show off the deck. Let's do it this way. Um, so the deck itself. This is a update to Simic Flash. Simic Flash is kind of an annoying deck. I would say like that. People love to play it. Um, I actually don't like this view. Uh, let's go visual. like this one a little bit better. Um, so yeah, uh, so people love to play it, hate playing against it. The whole premise of the deck is you're playing everything on the opponent's turn. You're either holding up a counter. If you don't want to counter what the opponent's playing, you drop down an, uh, a creature spell. And then you have disruption to kind of tempo out your opponent. Um, so a lot of the deck is holding together. Um, so we have three ops. Ops got reprinted, chose the old art, but we're playing three ops. Uh, it's good one mana draw spell, we can play it from there. Um, we have still Spectral Sailor, it's our one mana card that late game draws us cards. Uh, a couple unsummons, uh, we're playing two unsummons. Uh, I'll explain a reason in a sec why we went down to two. And we're playing three quench. Uh, we don't have uh, like the essence capture anymore, it's a little bit narrower. I like this early game. Really with this deck, you can't let a Teferi resolve. Uh, you need to be able to interact with a Teferi and get it down a hard counter on turn two, especially when uh, you're on the draw. Uh, so then we have one of the main cards that makes this deck tick, Brineborn Cutthroat. It is a small creature that gets bigger every time you play an instant spell. Uh, basically something on your opponent's turn. We have some negates. Negates probably could be cut. Um, maybe, we'll see how it is in theory. Uh, the card I'm really excited to try out is Once Upon a Time. So what this card says is instant. If this is the first card you've played this turn, you can cast it for free basically. And uh, then you Othanisa, which is basically look at the top five cards of your library, reveal a creature or a land from among them, and put it in your hand, put the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. So what this can do is help us get a threat, can help us get a land if we're missing. Uh, with Hinterland Harbor rotating, we need to get consistency in terms of our mana base. So this is something I want to try out. It's a free spell in the deck, and it basically cycles for free. Uh, Sinister Sabotage is our counters. Uh, and then we have Brazen, Brazen uh, Borrower. So this is kind of like the Vendillion click of the, t the deck. So for those of you who aren't familiar with how Adventure works, so it's an alternative casting cost, so you can cast it for its adventure instead. So its adventure is basically two mana, instant, return target, non-land permanent opponent controls to its hand. Uh, if you do take a card on an adventure, that adventure spell doesn't get ca uh, countered or exiled, uh, you can set it to like a special exile zone, and then you can cast the creature half uh, again. So it's kind of like two cards in one. Uh, it's also a flash flyer 3-1. Uh, can't block creatures with flying, but it's still a, a pretty aggressive clock. So the closest analog to this card would be something like Vendillion Click in Modern, which targets your opponent's hand and gets them to reshuffle. Uh, this one here will get them to bounce. So this is a little bit more flexible because it can deal with Teferi or anything else. Uh, so if something gets under our counter spells, we can bounce it back to their hand and then counter it back on the way down. Uh, our four drops are still the same. Frilled Mystic and Night Pack Ambusher. Night Pack Ambusher is arguably, well, not really arguably, it is the best card in the deck. Uh, if it goes unchecked, it just makes a, an army of wolves. Uh, mana base wise, pretty standard. Uh, we have our breeding pools as our duels. We have Temple of Mysteries in place of Hinterland Harbor. And I want to try out Castle Vantress. 
So Castle Ventress is pretty free in our deck. Uh, we're playing the four breeding pools as islands, and then uh, another seven islands, so 14, uh, sorry, 11 islands that it could come and play untapped. So it's pretty free to come in like that. And for turns where, for example, we either flood out or we have a lot of mana, don't have anything to do with it, uh, say we only have counters in, spell in hand and they don't play any creatures, we can scry two. And that's a way for us to filter our draws and give us a uh, pseudo card advantage. Sideboard wise, it's still a little early to tell. Um, it's very hard to peruse a sideboard when you don't know what you're playing against. So the way I approached it is blue-black will probably be a thing. There's a lot of removal in this format. Uh, so I want something to deal with that. Um, so we got these. Veil of Summers uh, gives our stuff hexproof and we can draw a card if they cast a blue or black spell. Sorcerer Spyglass is for Planeswalkers that resolve. Uh, this might not make the most sense. So it got reprinted in case you're wondering why it's the old version. Uh, another Negate, some Aether Gusts. There's a lot of really strong green creatures. Uh, you'll see when I make a Stompy list. Uh, it's something we need to really be considerate about, as well as Garrick is very scary. So Aether Gust kind of tempo plays them. Cerulean Drake, uh, if Gruel or Red-based aggro is a thing. Again, without knowing for sure, I'd imagine Cavalcade will still be a deck. Uh, it was pretty strong in the standard 2020. Cerulean Drake's a good blocker here. Oko, I don't know how good it is yet. Uh, so this is something I just had. Uh, if the opponent's playing big creatures, you can make them 3-3s, three which are a lot more manageable when you have like your wolves out. Uh, so something we could block. Food tokens against the aggro might be something relevant. And the ultimate is something we can swap. If they have like uh, a giant fatty, we can give them like a spectral sailor or something and go from there. And Ceratops is a holdover from my old list. Uh, I would imagine we'd be seeing quite a bit of flash, so it's a good mirror breaker. The fact it can't be countered and it can get haste, trample, the such. So it's pretty much the deck. Um, we're looking at sideboard and main 22 rares and 5 mythics if you're on arena. So relatively medium cost. It's not as bad as the 3 color decks. So especially with decks moving towards 2 or even mono color, we're going to be saving a lot of the rare lands that way. And your mythics are pretty much like Oko's. Oko's a mythic that you could probably forego for the time being. So it's really just the brazen, uh, brazen borrower that's going to be mythic. So um, let me know what you think of these videos, if you enjoy them, if it's something useful. Um, and like I said, you can find all my video, all the decks if you want to catch up without the video, they'll all be here. So everything I post always has a corresponding video, oh sorry, a deck list associated. So you can find them all kind of here. So everything with the ELD tag will be the ones that I'm uh, posting. So it's on aetherhub.com. Thanks for tuning in and let me know what you think.